हेलो एवरीवन आई एम एस डी परमार वेलकम बैक टू डी सी सी द वर्ल्ड ऑफ बायोलॉजी क्लास ट्वेल्व बायोलॉजी एंड इन टूडेज क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट इको सिस्टम द टॉपिक इज न्यूट्रिय साइकिल एंड इन आर सिलेबस वट न्यूट्रिय साइकिल वी विल हैव टू क्लियर दैट इज कार्बन साइकिल एंड फॉस्फोरस साइकिल Sorry everyone, in one of the slide I forgot to use the mic. So this is my humble request to use headphones to study this biogeochemical cycle. Sorry for inconveniency. It's very much difficult for me to again reshoot the whole topic. So please adjust with the voice. Thank you. Movement of elements through biotic and abiotic components of an ecosystem is called nutrient cycle. There are two type of nutrient cycles, gaseous and sedimentary. So, nutrient cycle could be either gaseous or we also call present in the atmosphere. And the second is sedimentary, means present in the crust of earth. Gaseous cycle or atmospheric cycle. The types of gaseous cycle could be carbon cycle, phosphorus cycle, hydrogen cycle, as well as water cycle. Uh, because the gaseous cycle, in that only we will also consider the hydrological cycle, um, which is the water cycle present in the hydrosphere. So, all the molecules which are present in the form of the either gaseous or the water vapor, they would be included into the atmospheric cycles or the gaseous cycle. And the elements which are present in the earth crust or we get them from the core of earth, those will be included into the sedimentary cycle. So here in atmospheric cycle, which we need to understand that is the carbon cycle. And in sedimentary cycle, what we are going to understand that is the uh, phosphorus cycle, calcium cycle. So here we will discuss about the phosphorus cycle. So let us talk about the carbon cycle at first. But before starting about the carbon cycle or phosphorus cycle in detail, I would first to like the discuss about the difference between a gaseous cycle and sedimentary cycle or uh, we can say the gaseous cycle and uh, non-gaseous cycle means the cycles of the matter so the main difference about the gaseous cycle and uh, non-gaseous cycle is the first thing is they would be included in the atmospheric uh, cycles means in the atmosphere whether or the hydrosphere whether this cycle would be present in form of any sedimentary mat matter means they would not be present or we cannot get them from atmosphere or water another difference between sedimentary cycle and the gaseous cycle is that these are in form of gas or in the water vapor whether these are in form of the uh, mineral okay gaseous cycle are most probably perfectly working cycle and they are rapid but the sedimentary cycle are less perfect and very slow okay then um, gaseous cycle they release from the um, any biochemical activities like carbons are getting released from our respiration also whether this all the matters are present in the earth crust or in the reservoirs okay so these are the difference of gaseous cycle and atmospheric cycle uh, sorry gaseous cycle and sedimentary cycle next is the there are some factors which are also affecting the biogeochemical cycles like uh, soil temperature ph these all are uh, regulatory factors for the release and even the rate of nutrients into the atmosphere so if we talk about our first biogeochemical cycle carbon cycle so as we know that carbon is a major source and a most abundant element carbon occurs in a solid form which is the monoatomic element as well as when it react with oxygen it will be occurred in a gaseous form or in a uh, atmospheric uh, cycle form so carbon occurs through the atmosphere as well as in the ocean and through the living and dead organism respiration these all are the sources by via which even combustion now that is also a major source for the release of carbon so mostly carbon is um, released by plants during the 
most important mechanism of our ecosystem that is photosynthesis so photosynthesis is the major source for the release of carbon and when this carbon would be uh, working with oxygen in the atmosphere we will have co2 money carbon dioxide as well as burning the combustion processes of organic matters fossil fuels and all the volcanic eruptions are also responsible sources for the release of carbon okay now let us talk about the carbon cycle in detail okay, so let us talk about the carbon cycle so carbon cycle is representation of the carbon cycle could be the CO2 combustions or chemical activities as well as the major source will be photosynthesis as well as the dissolved CO2 from ocean because the aquatic life would be also undergoing through the respiration so throughout their respiration what CO2 is released that will be also uh, after releasing again it would be mixing with the atmospheric CO2 only okay so uh, again one more thing which is important to know here is the the oceanic carbon dioxide actually it is also the regulatory uh, factor for the total global carbon component about one percent of the total carbon of the global uh, quantity has been added via oceanic carbon dioxide only okay so the carbon if we talk about uh, uh, importance of the carbon so we know that carbon is a complex organic molecule um, uh, which is present in most probably all the base of the life means it could be called the constitution of the base of life because uh, our cell the living cell contains protoplasm in a protoplasm the organic molecules like carbon dio uh, sorry carbohydrates proteins lipids our uh, enzymes which are all proteinic in nature so probably all the organic matters are having base constitution carbon is present in of them so we can say that all the life forms are having base is a carbon only so carbon is a, a global element okay so the biological uh, processes like uh, respiration and uh, photosynthesis are the major sources for the release of carbon dioxide decomposition of some waste uh, materials via uh, decomposers and the scavengers and some of the non biological activities like uh, combustions and um, uh, burning of uh, fossils and all these are also important sources for the addition of carbon into the atmosphere as well as into the hydrosphere okay so uh, carbon is uh, present in all overly uh, hydrosphere as well as in the atmosphere and so many sources are responsible for the addition of carbon and uh, uh, formation of the carbon dioxide via chemical reactions into the atmosphere so this is all about the carbon cycle okay so our next cycle is phosphorus cycle as in the beginning only what we have discussed that the phosphorus cycle will be present in our atmosphere uh, sorry not to say atmosphere it would be present in a mineral form so that is uh, present in the sedimentation means the earth crust will be the reservoir for the phosphorus so phosphorus is also a major constitution molecule because it is present in a most probably all the biological constitution like biological membrane which we call the plasma membrane then um, and uh, we have also learned the phospholipid bilayer okay so in that also phosphorus present the nucleic acids we will learn DNA, RNA, so nitrogen base, then a sugar molecule, pentose sugar and phosphorus molecule is also there. So this way phosphorus is also a constitution of a, a biological membrane as well as it is also present in energy flow system which we call ETS means electron transfer system. Many animals and um, uh, not only animals means so many living organisms they also need in a large quantity the phosphorus because they need it to make some shells the bones as well as the teeth 
as we also know that our bone marrow contains calcium and phosphorus both the elements the cycling of phosphorus between biotic and abiotic component of the environment will represent the phosphorus cycle so let us make the uh, schematic diagram for the phosphorus cycle first okay so suppose the living organism plants and animals as well as some of the microorganism in whom uh, we will mostly consider the uh, phosphorizing bacteria those bacteria who are responsible for the uh, fixation of phosphorus or accumulation of phosphorus so the bacteria in whom phosphorizing bacteria in animals the phosphorus mainly present in the bones okay uh, bone making as well as the teeth so that is the role of phosphorus in which biological constitution to phosphorus is <coughs> present sorry whether in plant is responsible for protoplasm synthesis okay in plant it is responsible for the protoplasm synthesis then uh, in the sedimentary uh, formation means which are the reservoir from where the phosphorus is get so that is the rock of phosphorus themselves only and some of the um, globular deposits so sedimentation some of the rocks in which the phosphorus is deposited or uh, themselves phosphorus rocks then uh, some fossils especially the bones of fossils they are also source of phosphorus okay so another thing uh, bones and teeth after decaying of uh, any animal means after the uh, death of in that organism definitely they would be also considered as fossil only so this way also again living organism would be transferring the phosphorus Uh, in form of the fossils and they will be again mixed with uh, uh, sedimentary rocks and the earth crust and again it would be mixing with the atmosphere uh, in any way or um, means a cycling form of the biogeochemical cycle okay sometimes what happens uh, some uh, loss of the uh, deep uh, um those kind of uh, particulate matters or uh, uh, we can say the uh, those kind of sediments uh, which have been uh, lost or very less amount of the sedimentation are there so that is called the geological pool okay so uh, that is also one factor which is working here in a phosphorus cycle less sedimentary particles most probably rock is a major reservoir of phosphorus in a mineral form and as we are talking here about the uh, sedimentary cycle so definitely we will consider the mineral form means the solid form all the reservoirs or the sources 
कैल्शियम एंड फॉस्फरस और कैल्शियम फॉस्फेट बोध आर इन सोल्यूबल मिनरल्स और इन सोल्यूबल मोलिक्यूल्स इन ऑर्गेनिक मोलिक्यूल्स विच आर प्रेजेंट इन द रिजर्वर एज वेल एज विच कुड बी फाइंड आउट फ्रॉम द डिकम्पोजिशन ऑफ द फॉसिल्स दैट बॉडीज प्लांट एंड एनिमल्स एंड ऑल सो द माइनेट अमाउंट ऑफ द फॉस्फरस और फॉस्फेट्स डिजोल्व इन द सॉइल गॉड फ्रॉम द फॉसिल फ्यूअल डिकम्पोजिशन कुड बी इन ऑर्गेनिक फॉस्फेट्स और दे कुड बी मैंशन लाइक इन ऑर्गेनिक फॉस्फेट पी ओ फोर थ्री माइनस एच पी ओ फोर टू माइनस एंड एच टू पी ओ फोर ओके पी ओ फोर थ्री देन एच पी ओ फोर सो विच आर दिस थिंग दिज आर इन ऑर्गेनिक फॉस्फरस इन ऑर्गेनिक फॉस्फरस विच कुड बी found either from the uh, phosphorus rocks or decomposition of the fossils and when they will be mixing with the earth crust some other organic molecules uh, like uh, um, nucleic acid of uh, living organisms when these plants and animals would be dying and their body would be decomposed by the activities of the scavengers so they will be also releasing the inorganic matter as we have been learning from the earlier standard only so this amount would be also mixed in the sedimentation on, or the earth crust only so they could be also a source of uh, a phosphorus only so this is about the phosphorus cycle so the major difference between carbon cycle and phosphorus cycle is first only that is uh, carbon will be in form th sorry this would be here carbon phosphorus so carbon would be present in form of gaseous or atmospheric cycle whether phosphorus will be present in the sedimentary cycle okay co2 major resource is also the respiration of living organism whether there is no any release of phosphorus by any kind of respiratory activities as well as uh, rainfall is also an appreciable event for the addition of carbon into the atmosphere phosphorus is also getting to be deposited via rainfall but it's a negligible amount as we know that during acid rain uh, so many uh, elements are getting dissolved throughout the rain water which have been mixed into the atmosphere via release of any factories and industrialization so that is also amount which could be added into our biogeochemical cycle but if we talk about phosphorus very less quantity is getting to be added via rainfall and uh, for uh, another major difference is that carbon is getting exchange between organisms and environment whether um, phosphorus would be also exchanged but in a very small quantity so this is all about the biogeochemical cycles thank you very much all the best